Good day, and welcome to Math for Chemistry, Metric Conversions. This is John. The metric system is quite useful in that we can convert one size of a unit into another using a series of prefixes. Each prefix, which is represented by a symbol, uh, represents a multiplier. So we have some base unit, which is going to tell us what type of unit we have, so a meter for length or a liter for volume can then have a prefix tagged to it to denote the size of it. So a kilometer is going to be 1,000 meters, or 10 to the third meters, a unit large enough to start measuring the distance between cities. However, if we wish to measure the distance between cells, we might wish to use something much smaller, like the micrometer, which is 10 to the minus sixth meters, or one millionth of a meter. However, if we have these, we may need to convert between them. This is fairly straightforward since all of the conversion factors are powers of 10. There's two primary ways of doing this. First, we have the dimensional analysis method. This is fairly straightforward. Since we know the multiplier is setting up an equality between our prefix added unit and our base unit, then we can use this as a conversion factor. So we set up an equation where we have the base unit times the prefix unit that we want to use divided by the multiplier and the base unit. Here's an example. Let's say we wish to take meters and convert them into centimeters. First we need to know how many meters. In this case I'll do 1.234 meters. And I'll take that multiplied by one centimeter divided by the multiplier, which is 10 to the minus two, or one one hundredth of a meter. This gives me 123.4 centimeters. I like using dimensional analysis if I'm already going to be using dimensional analysis. So if I'm going to use meters and convert them into something else later. This does have the downside in that I do need to do dimensional analysis from the base unit, which may require me to do two steps instead of one. And if I'm not already doing dimensional analysis, I then have to set up a dimensional analysis equation. Of course, I always need to make sure that my units will cross out, so I check that I have meters on top and meters on bottom, and I do so they cancel. The next method is the latter method. This is particularly useful when all I'm doing is converting from one metric unit to another and not actually changing the type of unit I'm using. So I'm going to do the same conversion again. In this case, I have 1.234 meters, and I've set up a ladder. This ladder has a series of steps with an X in the middle. The X denotes my base unit. In this case, it's meters, although it could be liters or grams or whatever other base unit I wish to be using. I've put my various metric units going up and down on corresponding steps. These steps correspond to the multiplier. Each step is a power of 10. So going up, I have deca, heca, kila, skip to mega, and I can extend my ladder farther up, including things such as giga and tera. Going down, I have deci, centi, milla, skip to micro, and I can continue my ladder going farther down with various smaller prefixes. Now I'm going to denote where I'm at, whatever base unit I'm using. This does not, in this case, have to be meters. So while it is meters and I put my mark by my x, this could be, say, hectometers, and I would have put my mark up here. I then denote where I want to go, which in this case is going to be centimeters again, which is over here. This step I can do in my head if I wish. Now, I'm going to do a series of jumps. I'm going to jump towards whatever unit I wish to use. So in this case, I've had to make one jump and a second jump. So I've taken two jumps. This is going to correspond to the number of jumps my decimal point will need to move. It'll move in roughly the same direction. So in this case, it's moved down and to the right. My decimal point will need to move to the right. So one jump, two jump. And this leaves me with 123.4 centimeters. Using the ladder, I'm able to move in the opposite direction as well. I begin by putting my mark at where I'm at, in this case the C for Senta, 
and my second mark to where I wish to go, or the K for Killa for this particular example. I'll then begin by hopping. One, two, three, four, five hops to go from Senta to Killa. I then hop my decimal point. One, two, three, four, five hops. Now I'm traveling through empty space when I'm doing my last two hops, so I'll wish to replace that with zeros when I install my decimal point. And I'm left with a little bit over one one thousandth of a kilometer, which, as we recall from previously, is about one meter. I can use the ladder going in either direction, and I don't need to utilize a second step going to the base unit and then away from the base unit. This is particularly helpful uh, when I wish to save a few steps. If I wish to create a multiplier for use in dimensional analysis, then I am able to do so by simply replacing the number on my current unit with a 1. That allows me to create the conversion factor, which then can be used in dimensional analysis. I hope this has helped, and have a good day.